in this video I'm going to show you how to make a rec rocking horse um, now I did start filming earlier but as my filming isn't very good I managed to delete the first part of the video which is making the bottom of the rocking horse so what I've done was I just took a piece of card and I've taped it to a board to give me a curve then I've literally just rolled out two pieces of a modelling paste so that it sets harder and I've just put them on my curve till they've dried so these have set quite hard now um, so what I'm going to do now is just bridge the gap here so that they're secured together so I've literally just got some more flour and modelling paste in the same colour I'm literally just going to roll it out double that over in case I've done it too thin because you don't want it to be too thin okay. and I'm just going to cut off two strips roughly the same thickness and I'm just going to bring this over again and I do apologise if the camera keeps going out of focus I'm not sure what I have done to it but it does keep losing focus while I'm doing things. And then just work out how wide you want it to be. So I don't want it too wide. So I'm going to cut that down. Probably to about that width there. So I'm going to cut two. Same as that. So do the other one on here. So I'll just compare against this one. So I'll cut it down. Like that. I'll just put these away so that they don't dry up. Okay. So we're going to secure one at the front and one at the back. Ooh, if you can get it to stay in place. If it keeps slipping down, you might have to just move it a little bit further up. And what we'll do is when we've decided exactly where we want it to go, we'll just stick that down with a little bit of water. So I'm just literally going to put a bit put a bit of water on the end of each of those and stick it in place where I want it to go just pressing gently not too hard so just a little bit of water on the end of each and again just pop it in place and just press it together just lightly like that Okay, what I'm going to do is just leave that now to dry for a little bit, otherwise if I start moving it around, um, it will come apart. So, we'll wait while that's dry because when we make the horse, we'll stick it straight on to here. Okay, so I'll leave that for a few hours now, or if you've got more time at least, then you know, leave it overnight. The longer you can leave it, the better. Okay, so just mixed again with some modeling paste just a bit of color in for a really pale brown which is the color I'm going to do my little rocking horse in obviously you can choose any color you want um, now keep the bottom of your rocking horse to hand just so that you can tell for size how big to make like your horse's body because obviously you don't want to make it too big if it's too big for your rocking horse too small that it's lost on it okay so what you're going to do Make sure you've got enough in your colour for your head, your legs and your body. Now, sometimes it's a bit of trial and error with how much to get, so you just want to sort of have a bit of a play around. So I think that's a little bit too much for my body. So I'm going to roll it into a ball. Now, if it's drying up a bit, just add some treks and obviously keep it in a bag so that it's airtight and it doesn't dry up. So we're going to start with a ball, which I'm then going to turn into a bit of a teardrop shape, just ever so slightly. So you're going to roll it, just trying to roll it at one end so that you get in this kind of shape. Okay, so the horse has got like a bit of a bum here at this end, basically. Okay, so you don't want too long a body, but like I say, keep just trialing it against your rocking horse, well, the bottom of your rocking horse. 
so that we can see for size, okay. So I think I'm about happy with that size. Now, I don't want my horse to be too fat for the width of the bottom of my rocking horse either. So where I'm going to attach the back legs, I'm just going to push that in just ever so slightly so that when we add the legs, it's not going to add loads of extra width onto the horse. Okay. So we've got that there. Just play around with the body till you are happy with the shape you've made it. Now you can have a head that's just stuck straight onto here, or if you prefer, you can curve your body up a little bit to create a slight neck for your horse. And then I'm just going to pinch it ever so slightly here, again where I'm going to put my front legs onto the horse. And it's only tiny, so if you don't pinch it, don't worry. I just find if I do pinch it as well, it gives me a rough guide as to where I want to put legs. I do the same thing when I'm doing people as well. Okay, so that's our very basic body now. Um, so what we can do is now add a bit of a tail, but we're going to wait for it to dry a little bit now before adding a head and legs because we want it to firm up a bit so that that neck stays upwards. Otherwise, if we had a head, it's just going to go back down. Okay. So I'm going to find a darker brown for the mane. Obviously, you can use any colour you like. Okay, so I've mixed a colour for my tail. So, again, pull off a small amount first and you're going to roll it at either side to create, well, it's not a sausage shape, but so that it's thinner at either end. And this is just roughly, I'm going to pinch a bit off there so it's only a short point at that end, just roughly so we can get a guide as to the tail size. Okay, and what we would do is push that pointy end under like that okay so if you think it's too big just take a little bit off and what I try and do is put one main piece on for the hair and then add a couple of extra little bits around it okay so I'm just gonna point it now at the end like that and ever so slightly up at this end but I'm going to turn that end under, I don't know if you can see, okay, and then that will go on the end there now. If you want it longer, just make it a little bit slimmer, squeeze it down a little bit, to make it the required length that you want it to be. So when you are happy with the length, just put a little bit of water either on the bottom or on the tail, and you're just going to press it on where you want it to go. Now if you put too much water on you'll find it slips and it doesn't stick on. So just wipe a little bit off. And then try pressing it back on. Now if it's really not sticking for you, the other option, so you'll see sometimes it's easier to do things one way than it is to do it another, is to just pop little hole in where you want it to go, a little bit of water in the hole and then put the end of the tail into that hole like that. So whichever way you find it easier really for that. Okay and then just shape the tail to how you want it to be. Okay so that's your basic bit of tail. Now if it's not sticking just prop it up with something and leave that to dry before adding the other bits of your tail. You do want to add your next bit again just taking some small balls just roll them so they're slightly fatter in the center thinner either end and you're just literally going to put it over the top of your original one and stick it down so you might if it's not long enough just take it off and just roll it a little bit more and add it to your piece like that and you're going to do that a few times to build up your tail just play around with the end of it to get it positioned where you want it to go. Okay. And just keep going. Like that.
if you need to prop it up, put something up under that's the right height to hold it in place. So I've just put the cover of the end of my knife underneath just because it holds it to the right height. And then I can continue working on it while it's like that. Now, you want to leave it to dry. But you can, if you want to, add some little spots to the bum. I do apologise if my head's in the way. So literally just roll a really tiny amount of ice in and you're just going to press it onto the bum area of the horse. And you don't need many. You don't want to put them too low down, otherwise they'll end up getting in the way of where you're going to stick the top of the leg. So just a couple to start with, or maybe three or four should be fine. I'll just move that around so I can see what that looks like. You can always add more later if needed. Okay, and the same to the other side. And then when we've done that, we're just going to let it dry. So, while our body's drying a bit, we're going to make the head and we'll make it separately to the body. Now, you're going to take some more of your fondant in the same colour as your body or your modelling paste even. Um, as you can see, it's still resting until it dries properly. Now, just take a ball at first and just hold it against your body just so you can judge size wise how big it needs to be. So that's going to be a little bit too big, I think. So we'll just put some this away. So I'm just starting with a ball, making sure I've smoothed out any cracks that are appearing in the icing. And I'm just going to gently taper down so that it's slimmer at one end, like that. Okay, I'm just going to hold it against my body again to test size wise. And I'm just going to put an imprint where it's going to be under the chin as well. So when you've done that, just going to add a couple of nostrils. Now you're just going to take a small amount of the same colour icing again. I'm going to divide it into two little balls. I do apologise the video is a bit darker now because I started while well, it was nice and light outside and it is now getting quite dark unfortunately. Now obviously you can have quite big nostrils if you want or you can keep them quite small so I think that might be a little bit too big. So I'm just going to take one of them and I'm going to divide that one into two to see if that's a little bit better size wise. Take a little bit off that one as it looks a little bit bigger than the other one. It is quite difficult to get them both the same size. Okay. So when you are happy with the size, what you're going to do is just put a tiny bit of water where you want to add your nostrils. So. I would say have them slightly to the side of the nose rather than in the centre. I'm just going to push them on, just gently. And don't push them too flat at the moment. And what we're going to do is taking the bottom end of your paintbrush, just push them in just a little bit like that. Okay. There you've got to start your nostrils. Now depending where you want your eyes, you might want to just put a slight indentation with your fingers where you want those eyes to go, which gives you a guideline for when you're going to draw them on. Now you can make your eyes quite fancy, you can just keep them as little simple black dots, whichever you prefer, and both look fine on it. hope you can see what I'm doing, sorry, because when I keep turning it towards myself, you might not be able to see it as well. Okay. So that's the start of our horse's head. Now, <clears throat> using a knife, you can just put a little line round for the bottom of the mouth. 
and then I'm just going to tuck it in at either side. Right, so what I've done is just taking the bottom end of my paintbrush, is just push two holes in the head where we want the ears to go. Just I just find if I put a hole in place, they tend to stick in just a little bit better. So I'm just going to take some fondant that's the same colour as my horse. So I've just got a small amount for the ears. So I'm just dividing it into two little balls. And I'm just going to squash them down just a little bit and then I'm going to pinch them together to make a little bit of a point for the top of the ear, like that. So I'm going to do that with both, so squash it down and point it. And then, in fact it's probably easier with the bottom of the paintbrush so it's something round. I'm just going to press it into the bottom to create a bit of an indentation. And I'm just going to nip it together just a little bit. And then just taking a little bit of water, point it in the holes that you've made. Just going to slot the ear into that little hole like that. Okay, and then just move it around until you're happy with the position that it's in. Same again with that one. You can put a bit of water on the bottom of the ear if you want. I'm going to slot it into the hole. And I'm going to move that round until I'm happy with the position. So it doesn't look very horse like at the moment, but when we've got a mane and things on, it will look different. So I'm just going to twist the ears into position I want them to be. So I think I'm going to put them a little bit more sideways on the head than what I had them. Okay, what I'm going to do now is give it some eyes. So for the eyes I'm just going to use a small round cutter or you can roll two small balls by hand whichever you find easier. So I've just got a small amount of white that I'm rolling nice and thin. I'm just going to cut a little circular shape now just put it against your horse's face just to check size wise that you're happy with the size of the eye okay so what i'm going to do is just change the shape of them ever so slightly and if i can get them off my fingers so i'm just going to push them just ever so slightly you probably can't see what i'm doing properly i'm just squashing them just ever so slightly either side to make them a little bit more oval shape then when I've done that, I'm just going to cut just a really small bit off the bottom of each eye so that you've got a flat bit at the bottom. And it can be quite difficult to make them even in size. Now I don't know how clear these are to see or if the camera will be going out of focus again. I do apologise that I'm not very good with the camera. Okay, so when you've got those to the right shape, you're just going to put a tiny bit of water, not too much, in each eye socket that you've made. You're just going to try and pick these up and stick them in the place that we've made those eye sockets. And obviously try and make sure they're even, so just turn it around so you can see them. So when you're happy with the position of them, what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of a mane at the front. We'll wait while we've um, stuck the head to the body before we add it down back. Um, and then we'll paint up the eyes. Taking your mane colour, I'm just going to add a little bit of Trex to it. So, just a little bit to mix it in as mine's dried up a bit from when I was using it earlier. So it'll just make it a little bit easier to work with and it'll get rid of all the cracks. Okay, so I'm just 
going to wet the horse's head just in the centre between the ears. And I'm just going to take a small ball to start with and roll it at either end so you've got a fatter bit in the middle like that. And I'm just going to stick it to the top of the head like so. Now if you need a bit more water just stick a bit more on and then if you want to reposition your hair just curl it up a little bit at the end. I don't know if you can see that very well on the camera. Taking a little bit more, a little bit smaller this time doing the same thing again. You're just going to add it next to the piece you put on. And again, same at the other side. So you're starting to get a little bit of a mane at the front. No, you don't. If you want it shorter than this, you can do it shorter. You could do it curly if you wanted it to have a curled mane. And I'm going to start just sticking more on top of the ones I've just put on. Just making sure you've got enough water to stick it. Just keep going until you're happy with the size of it. So what I'm going to do now is just paint on some eyes. Now if you prefer, you might want to just roll up little bits of black fondant and stick them in the centre of the eyes. Um, it's entirely up to you with which you prefer to do. Okay. So I'm going to take lilac-y colour for mine just because I'm going to stick it on a cake I think that's going to be a lilac colour so I'm just going to paint on some eyes and you paint them as big or as small as you want as long as they're contained within the white bit of the eye that you've just stuck on doing the same on this side Just look at them and see if one's a bit bigger than the other. So one of mine is a little bit bigger than the other one. So I'm just going to a bit more. Okay, so when you're happy with that, what we're going to do is paint a bit of black on. I've just got a really fine paintbrush for this, but you can buy edible pens that you can do this with as well. So it just depends which way you prefer. I find easier. If you are doing it with a pen, you do need to wait while your icing is fully dried. Otherwise, you'll find that it just sticks into your icing rather than staying on the surface. So what we're going to do is start at this corner of the eye and do a really fine line. Going up the eye and then again at this corner. Now I hope I haven't put my face at the top of my head in the video for you all as I tend to do. So if you're not confident with painting on to the eyes, you know, you don't have to have this bit on. You don't have to do the eyes this way. That's entirely up to you. And just make it a little bit thicker at the top bit. Just a tiny bit. I'm just going to make it match the other one now. So I've just turned it so it's facing me just to make it a little bit easier for me to paint it this time. 
and you know have a practice on a piece of icing first that's not your final one so you're happy with that okay And what I'm going to do is just add a couple of little eyelashes at either side. So just painting on just a little flick, another little flick. You can have two, you can have three, whichever. I tend not to put more than three on, otherwise it can look a little bit spider-like. But have a play around and see what you think looks best on yours. Okay. Now, for the centres of your eyes, you can either paint them on in black, or if you prefer, you can roll up a bit of fondant. So I think I'm gonna roll up a bit of fondant and put them in. Tiny bit of black, I won't even need as much as I've got here. quite difficult to judge the amount until you've rolled it into two small balls so let's put them down and see so one of mine's a little bit bigger than the other so I'll add a little bit more to my other one let's see if I can make them both the same size when you are happy with the size start with the ball and then roll it so it's ever so slightly oval and then I'm just going to press it into the centre of my eye like that in centre of the purple bit that I've just done and I'm just going to press that down a little bit with my nail look all black stuck to me like so same with the other one just make sure it's slightly oval and it's similar in shape to your other one if you find it's not you can always just pull it off and stick it back on again okay so I'm just going to look at it from the front so I can see they're even or not if they need changing okay so they're on there now like that and then just we're going to add just a tiny bit of white and I'm just using the rainbow dust which I'm just going to mix with a tiny bit of water so taking a bit of your dust in the lid with a drop of water now you'll see mine's not actually white mine is cream White is better, but I dropped the white one all over the floor, so I've just got cream left at the moment, unfortunately. Okay, so again, just using a fine brush, just dot it in the eye on the corner of your black a bit, like that. Now you put one dot on, or if you prefer, you can put two on. So we're just going to put it on the other one to match. This is the trickiest bit because sometimes you'll find you end up with one big dot and one tiny dot and it can be difficult to get them even. Okay. So, if you're happy with it, leave it like that. If you want to add a smaller dot, just add a smaller one slightly further inside. So you'll see it's really tiny. In fact, so tiny that you might not even be able to see it so I might have to go over it again just slightly. Okay, like that, so there's the, the eyes done. If you want, you can add a bit of pink blusher. Give it a bit of colour. So this time, instead of using the cream powder that we've used for the eyes, I'm just going to use a pink one, but we're going to use a dry brush. So you just use a dry brush. You're just going to Gently put it on where you want a little bit of colour to be. So I don't want too much colour on it, ever so faint. Like you might want to put a tiny bit of pink in the nostrils, give the nostrils a bit of colour. Might want a little bit in the centres of the ears. If you want those a little bit pinker in the middle. My ears are still a little bit wet actually, so you're probably best waiting my ears have dried a bit. Try not to get it all over like I have done, because you'll find when you're using your icing again, you'll get it stuck in the colour 
and it'll come off on whatever you're doing. So it's only very faint, so much so that I don't actually know if you'll be able to see where I've put the pink on or on the camera. Okay, so we'll just leave that now to dry again. And we've got our bodies that we've done earlier. Now, you remember we put the bottom of our rocking horse over a curved set. Now, when it's set, you should have the bottom of your rocking horse like that, okay? So, the moment it rocks, it probably won't rock when I've put it on a cake, because I'll have to stick it down. Um, and we're just going to add our horse to it now, okay? So, what we're going to do is make some legs. Now, the legs are going to have to be quite thick, so they're not going to be very realistic, just because I need the legs to support the weight of the body. Okay, so you're going to use your colour that you've used for your horse. So, I'm just going to add a bit of Trex again. started to dry up a little bit. So I've got your ice in. What I'm going to do is just divide it into four so that now I've got enough for the legs. Now it's difficult to divide it equally or I find it quite difficult to divide it equally so what I sometimes do is just roll it into balls so I can compare size wise if they're all similar or not. So I think that one's a little bit smaller than some of my others, so I'm just going to take a little bit off the two that I think look a little bit bigger. See if it makes it any bigger. It's still a tiny bit smaller. Okay, so there we go. So what I'm going to do for each leg is literally start with a ball, Roll it. Now mine's starting to crack a little bit again. So just try and push that crack out. So I'm rolling it into a bit of a long cone shape almost like that. Okay. So these are going to be our basic shapes for our legs. So just hold them against your rocking horse. You've got an idea for size, for what length you want them. You could have them thinner, longer, but you best not to do them too thin. Otherwise, they won't support the weight. And I would say do this all in modelling of flour paste as well, so that you know it's going to hold the weight of your horse. Okay. So I'm going to do that for all of them. Now, the back legs, I'm just going to make the tops of them a little bit thicker as well. So I'm going to narrow it in a little bit there. This bit, bottom bit is going to be our foot. And then this top bit will go against the hip up here. So same for both sides. Try and make it a little bit fatter if you can. If you don't want to make it fatter at the top, you don't have to. You can just have it the same as the front ones, that's fine. Okay. So now what we're going to do is attach them to our horse and our rocking bit. So what I'm going to do is attach them to this first and then rest the horse on them. So if you're not pushed for time, you might want to leave the legs to dry and then add the body. Um, if you're a bit more pushed for time, we can add support into the legs and then add the body. Such so as like a cocktail stick running through the legs. Okay, so I'm going to take my front legs first. Now, if you wanted to add hooves at the bottom, you can do, but I'm going to keep mine quite plain. So I'm literally just going to add some water to the bottom and I'm going to stick it onto the base. Like so. So you want to keep them within the width of your little rocking horse base. Now we'll move them around a little bit as well when we've got the horse's body on. So we're going to stick the back ones on as well. Now you might find if they are a little bit too long when we add it, we'll just push them down a little bit so they fit a little bit better size-wise. Okay. So we'll push those on. Like that, and then we'll 
just going to see if we can get the body in. So the body will just slot in like so. And then you will have to be careful with this because they will start moving around a lot. So like I say, if you want to leave it at this point, and we can stick the horse in afterwards, but you would have to make sure that the gap is exact. Now the other thing we can do is put some support underneath while this is going to dry in place like that. So, we can add support through the middle, because obviously there's a hole at the bottom, so when we pick it up we can pull the support out. And because this is dried, if we put a stick or something in the middle, it will pierce through our body. So I'm just going to work out height wise. The size it wants to be, so I'm just going to push my cocktail stick in the middle so that the body won't fall further down than a certain point. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit of water, not too much that it slips straight back off to my body. So that's in all the points that we'd indented earlier for our joints to go into. Okay, I'm just going to push that on that way. Okay, so you're going to push the tops of your legs onto the body and turn it round so you can see it both sides and again the same with the front legs, apologies if my head's in the way again, we're just going to push that down so it should be the same all the way around, okay, so it doesn't rock as much now. If you want to move the legs a bit further forward, if you think they're too close together, then you can do. Just have a play around and see what you think looks best for it. Or it might be you want to move the back ones further apart, entirely up to you. So we're just going to play around with that just a little bit to get it where we want it to be. Okay. Just move this back one back a tad. Like so. I'm just going to brush off the extra water that I've got dripping down the bottom. Okay. So what we'll do is I'll let that dry a little bit and then when we've let that dry, we'll start sticking the head and the mane on. What we're going to do now is just create a bit of a base for a rocking horse to stand on. So I'm just taking some white fondant. I'm just going to need a little bit. I've just got a small piece of greaseproof paper so that when I create the base I can leave it to dry on here without it sticking to it. So I'm just going to roll it out. I don't want it too thick but I don't want it really thin either. Otherwise it will just snap if I do it too thin and try and keep it even all the way round. So I've just got a cutter like this. You can use cookie cutters like that too. Whichever you prefer for it. So I'm just going to push it in and I'm just going to tear that off from around the edge and push that out like that. Now, because I've rolled it so thick, it has left a slight indentation there. So I'm just going to lift this up. Now, you can turn it over and use the other side or if you like the indentation and can use it for like part of a pattern, then leave that on. So I'm just going to put it now on my greaseproof paper like that till it dries and I might just add a little bit of patterning on there. So I'm just going to use a little heart shape cutter and I'm just going to press indentations of the little heart in each little curve. 
You don't have to do this. You don't even have to put it on a base. If you prefer not to have it on a base, that's fine. I just thought it would make my little model a little st bit sturdier if it's on something. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is just make each of those purple. Now, if you want, you can stick, well, that's purple, cut them out and stick them in. Um, or you can just paint it into whatever you find easier. So going to paint these on, a bit of water in with my paint. Okay, so I've been all the way around that now. And what I'm going to do is just leave my base to just dry overnight. Okay. Right, so we've now got our head that's set a bit. And also our body, so I've left this overnight now, and you can see it's set to the bottom of uh, my rocker there. Okay. So what I've done, and I did forget to say this before um, we let it dry, um, is was I just put a cocktail stick just into the body, and then I pierced a hole in the bottom of the head, so that it wouldn't crack the head and the body by adding them together when they're dried like that okay so now that they're set I can push the head on because I've made the hole in that earlier okay like that so you'll see we have got a bit of a gap around the back now so what we're going to do is we can fill that in either with more of the horse is body colour or when we add the mane that will cover quite a bit of the gap down there as well okay so just decide as well if you want your head facing straight forward as rocking horses usually are or if you want it you know to one side so if there's a side that you particularly prefer of your horse then you know you could tilt your head in that direction when you're happy with it just add a little bit of water just between just to help it stick a little bit now if you've got royal icing to hand you can just pipe a little bit of royal icing in um, I haven't got any made up and I just find water is nice and easy to use okay. So what we're going to do now is take some more of our main colour. So I'm just kneading the main. What I'm going to do is just to support the gap between the head and the neck, I just pull off a small ball of it and I'm just going to push that into the gap there to start with so that it's got a little bit of strength between the head and the body, just making sure you push it down to secure it in place. Okay, so when you've done that, I'm just going to wet down the back of the head from here where the mane is going to go, and we're just going to bring it down to just slightly onto the body there. I'm just going to start with some smaller pieces, just rolling them into little pieces, and I'm just going to start at the bottom there. Okay. Now you can add them as individual pieces like what I'm doing here, or if you prefer, you can just roll a bigger block, shape it a little bit like that, and then you can put indentations in with a tool. Okay, so literally, just taking a tool, just put in some lines running across like that, so it gives you a bit of a main shape, and then you would just add that. And of course you can add as many as you like in there. Press quite deep, to give it quite a 3D effect like that, okay? And then you literally just add that onto there like that. Okay. So you can do that for part of it, and then we can also add bits to that as well. So I'm just gonna put a bit of water on that, stick it on. At the moment you might find your head moves a little bit until it has set properly, okay? So just push that in place there like that. And then you can Continue to add more little lines in while it's on the head if you want. And at the same time as me putting in the little lines, I'm also just pushing it onto the head as well, hoping that that's going to stay. Okay. So we've got that on now for a bit of a start. And I'm just going to cover the bit of the mane down here that you can see. 
and at this side as well. So apologies if you can't really see what I'm doing very well, but I'm just going to put a bit of water down there. Rolling individual pieces of mane again, and I'm just going to pop them just down here, just to cover a little bit down there. So that's your horse finished. Then um, if you want to add extra like a saddle and a bow and things, obviously you can do that, that's fine. But that's your basic rocking horse there. Again, while it's still wet, you can move it around a little bit, but just make sure it is still wet while you're doing that. Okay. If you want to add it to your base, again, just stick it to your base with a little bit of water and that's it, you're finished. Thank you for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel um, and also visit my cakes and other creations on my Facebook page.